Hey guys, what's up? It's Jonathan here from Infinite Potential and Carl Dobson. Hey, so this hey. is our um, first time doing something like this. So forgive us if the video, audio, and everything in particular is terrible. Um, we're really trying. We've been on here for forty minutes now, and I think I'm ruining Carl's life. <laughs> He's laughing, he's not saying a word. <laughs> so what we're doing today is we're doing a... Actually, Carl, why don't you tell everyone what we're doing? Right, so um, it's been over six months since Batman Terror of Arkham was released. Uh, we have had over 12,000 views, which was, to be honest, beyond what we'd imagined. Um, but... They keep going up every day. More people are liking it. We're getting more positive feedback. Everything's going absolutely great. So today, we're going to treat you guys to a commentary of myself and Jonathan. So we're going to go through the film with you and share some behind-the-scenes secrets, maybe, and maybe have a chat about what we're currently on with and what we have planned for the future, although I'm not going to share too much. Um, so, yeah. Um, anything else Jonathan wants to add? Um, the, uh, <laughs> I think you just pretty much nailed it on the head there. Um, to be honest, I think it's going to be good to just talk about really what we liked in the film, what we want to improve on in the future. And um, yeah, so let's, should we just take it away from her? Yeah, why not? Okay, so <laughs> you're probably going to hear us say pause and play a lot. That's just basically because me and Carl are doing this through two separate... Um, videos so we just want to make sure we've got everything lined up properly yes um so should we play let's play three two one go okay so this is uh the, the, the most integral bit of the film now this is uh the non-profit thing we have at the beginning of everything <laughs> Okay, so are you on the bit with Matthew now, Carl? I am. So, <laughs> this is actually one of the things that I find really funny. It was this was never actually meant to be in the film. Uh, it was an audition video. The, it wasn't an audition video. Basically, we'd finished a day of shooting. Uh, actually, let's pause it while we're here because I'll end up talking for too long. So, we're, what, 43 seconds in roughly and we're already talking. Uh, <laughs> so... One of the shoots that we had that you'll see later on in this film, we, we, we'd we finished on set really late and everyone had to go back home dressed as the character that they were playing. <laughs> so you had Matthew going home dressed like he is there and you, we were all using public transport at this point as well. And then you had Bex, who was obviously later in the film with the Harley Quinn makeup and myself with the panda eyes. So... <laughs> When uh, Matthew went home, uh, he just made this little video uh, with the monologue of the killing joke. And um, in context of everything, uh, we didn't have time to shoot certain things that we wanted to be at the beginning of the film. So this fit in really well with the whole story of the film. It's like a, pro a, pre a little bit of prelude to everything that is to come. So that was exciting, but also very random. Well, put it this way, even I didn't expect it, so I didn't even know this was in the film since I watched it, so... Carl's looking through the scripts like, what the hell? There was a script? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's it's, play. Because I've never actually held a script, mate. <laughs> what? I don't remember actually holding a script. So I used to, I have... I mean, in Costa Coffee. In Costa Coffee, we had a script. Yeah, but... we used to go to Costa Coffee a lot to um, look through the script. Um, hey, but... what about this? But it changed so many times due to people dropping out. You'll hear more about this later on, but due to people dropping out or things changing just to make the shoot a bit less stressful on us all. Yeah. Um, that by the end of it, we were just kind of putting the script together on the day, really. Um, I think a lot of the times it does benefit, but a lot of the times as well, um, you can... Actually, I don't think a lot of the times you can tell. Um but we'll uh, we'll see what happens when we look later on in the film. So you ready to play again, Carl? Okay. Three, Let's... two, one, go. Okay. So uh, again, still watching his speech. Absolutely. Sorry, can you hear that over the end? Uh, yes, I could. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Don't worry. 
We're all professionals here, Carl. Wait. <laughs> I'm not really, am I? <laughs> yeah, we, we all are. We all are. I know the right things to say. <laughs> I accidentally played that in front of Jessica and it terrified her. <laughs> so again, with this opening here, we won't pause it, but um, a lot of this stuff was not meant to be the opening of the film at all. It was not even, I know that. Um, the title sequence changed about ten times, that's not even an exaggeration. This, <laughs> this shot here with the newspaper I shot on my kitchen table with two days to go. This was shot on a green screen with about a week to go. And that was shot on a green screen with about a week to go. Uh, so, and that was a CGI shot I made before we even started shooting film. And hey, that was another one in Batman Forever, so it doesn't look that bad. That is, that is very true, I'll take that. Yeah. Um, and then the next shot is meant to be, I don't know if you can actually, if it, you feel like it is, but this is meant to be Wayne Manor. Um, Carl's, That's Wayne Manor, is it? Yeah, Carl's looking very confused there. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was the intent of the thing, but again, we were running so like I had some birds fly past in the background, some fake grass at the front. I was just working with what I could. It's coming through. It's not too loud, is it? No, it's perfect. Oh, is it? Oh, good. It's timed up it's perfectly with mine, so I'm not complaining. Oh, perfect. Um, so these are all stock footage shots that are basically meant to be um, Gotham Museum. Uh, and this is one of my favourite um, scenes of the film, really. Also, uh, can we just pause? Three, two, one, pause. Okay, so uh, this the music playing in this scene um, is... I know where it comes from. Do you actually know where it comes from? Westworld. Have you seen Westworld, Carl? No. <laughs> I just know that's where it comes from. Okay, you just set me up for failure there, really, didn't you? Um <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is from Westworld. Uh, I went through multiple different songs that I wanted to play here. What I was originally wanting to play was an orchestral version of Black Hole Sun. Um, which, oh, cool. Which, if, for those who don't know, we opened up with an alternative version of Black Hole Sun for um, The Shattered Cowl. So I basically wanted it to, every time we have a Batman film, to open it with the same song. But the only reason in the end I didn't end up going for that is because... Um, I thought it overpowered the scene a bit, so I absolutely love this cover of Runaway, originally performed by Kanye West, covered by Ram and Um It's it's in Westworld, like Carl just said there, and um, I think it balances the scene nicely to when the Joker enters. Um, also, I was testing this scene prior to anyone else seeing it, and someone basically said, well, you can't really tell what's going on there. And I was like, yeah, actually, you can't tell why everyone is there. So what I had to basically do was this shot here. Uh, does it say char charity auction on your screen, Carl? Yes, it's, it's 2 minutes 53. Yes, so the charity auction bit, this, <laughs> this thing here is a full CGI shot that I added. Uh, I made this in Photoshop and basically just... Threw it in there as like an establishing shot, so you actually knew what the event was, um, and I think it does benefit the scene, and at the same time, it doesn't really take you out of it either. I don't think it looks like CGI or anything like that. It just fits in fine, it, but yeah, we'll we'll get we'll get to. It's not too noticeable, I don't think. You yeah. know, I mean. I wasn't sure whether it was CGI or whether it was real, so if you can't tell, then I don't think it really matters. I'll take that. That is that. If, if, if that's the compliment I get out of this video, guys, then I'm happy with that. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Ready to play? Are you, are you a 2.53? I am. Three, All right, so three, two, two one, go. Okay, so this is the wonderful Jason Redshaw here. My man. Um, okay, pause. Oh, one, two, three, pause. There okay, we go. so... Go one. You'll basically see there's a guy in the background here with glasses. Oh, hang on a minute, I ain't got that. No, you have, you have, you have. He's passed the lady to the far right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. He just turned up on set. We have no idea who he is. Uh, he's not credited because he just turned up on set. And um, 
he wasn't he wasn't he, he wasn't even dressed in a suit. So what we had to do is we had to sneak him into the corner so that you couldn't tell that he was wearing a bomber jacket. <laughs> I actually didn't know that. Little things like that happen throughout all of this film, ladies and gentlemen. So have fun with that. We're only three minutes and one seconds in, and we've stopped the video about thirty times. Yeah, we have. Okay, you ready to play? Ready to play? Three, two, one, go. Okay, I think we're nailing this time. We are. Um, <laughs> I do love this scene. This is one of the most difficult scenes to shoot because there's that many people there. Uh, and also, oh, in the background then, I'm not going to pause it. This You can see all the food from the cast. <laughs> oh, what's this? I completely <laughs> forgot about that. And I love all the dead space to the left of the screen here. It's absolutely brilliant. What was I thinking? It's true that Jason can pull off any kind of suit, any kind of weird sort of, you know, it's kind of, uh, how do you describe it? Um, obviously, that's not colourful. Crazy. Like, he can pull off a lot, can't he? Definitely. Make it look great. Yeah. Okay, so here's the introduction of Jasmine, who plays Diana Prince. Um, very lucky to have Jasmine portray this character, and we want to eventually do more things with her in the future. Um, she deserves at least, you know, one solo film, didn't she? Yeah, we, we did write one. We did write one, but it's time. Um, Jasmine's wearing a wig in this scene. Complete wig. Yes, she is. Bang! Okay, that CGI explosion was a ball late today. And ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Mr. <laughs> Carl Dobson. So, can we pause this in three, two, two one. one? So. Four minutes 30. Yes. Yes! <laughs> so, again, this is one of those scenes that. Wasn't meant to be here. It really wasn't. Um, it wasn't. No. We we shot this scene so early into production. Yeah, and this was we're talking like what over two years ago, maybe. Yeah, and this, this years, scene, wasn't it? this scene was basically just put in here, um, like in this actual point of the film as an establishing introduction to James Gordon. I think it really works where it is in the film. But, oh yeah. It was not meant to be here in the slightest. For when we had several different script changes, um, this was in a complete... I think this was like somewhere near the middle of the film. Um, I had this down originally on the clips as scene 19. <laughs> so... Oh, I didn't know it was that far in. I know, I know. Um, but um, do you remember much of this day, Carl? Uh, yeah, because this day... It was just me and you. Because yes, um, Curtis wasn't, because he was meant to be on set, he obviously wasn't there. It was just me and you. So we were filming this in the Manchester Central Buildings when there was actually a church service on. Yeah. It was the Seventh day Adventist church service, which we always seem to clash with. <laughs> but they were happy to have us there. They were always, you know. Um, so, because um, we shot this, um, we actually wrote all their names out on the board, didn't we? Yeah. Like on the um, GCP. <laughs> GCPD staff. Yeah. Uh, um, and we also shot some other bits that didn't make it into the film. Yeah, the, the bits that we shot uh, that didn't make it into the film. Uh, eventually, I will release all the deleted scenes because I think it's quite interesting to. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just responding to a quick text, an urgent text. Apologies, ladies and gentlemen. But um, mm. I think it's quite important to reveal some of the deleted scenes because oh, yeah. it, it tell, it'll show people how much we actually how much we didn't put into the film. There was, Ladies and gentlemen, there was about, I'd say, 20 minutes that were edited fully that didn't make it into this film um, from various changes throughout the year and a half of post-production. Um, the story narrative changed drastically, so the scenes were no longer viable. I mean, whatever we could use that we shot, <laughs> we use, and we'll get onto more things later. Oh yeah, um, but this one was one of those scenes, and the things that we didn't shoot um, were basically there was a I think there was a scene that was on a set of stairs. Yeah, that's the one I was referring to when I'm running up the stairs, looking you know very urgent. Yeah, <laughs> that was now. Now I remember that actually, Carl. I believe that that took place in the asylum. 
Um, yes, because that's when because we actually used this building as part of the asylum, even in later shoots, didn't we? Yeah, we, that, that the, shown in the film. The majority of the film was shot in this building, I'd say. Yeah, it was uh, either this or uh, to Sambro, wasn't it? So yeah, Sambro International. Um, but the other scene that we shot was basically, um, in an alternative version of the film, uh, Batman and Jim hadn't met up in the asylum or anything. And no. um, Batman uh, had basically been in a fight with a load of rogue GCPD officers and um, Gordon was communicating to Batman over a phone uh, or something. It was something like that, wasn't it? Yeah, because um, they were stating that they've got um, Batman's the target and then yes. Gordon's like, do not kill the Batman or something like that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and that then you hear good. gunshots. He thinks that Batman's... Being killed, but then he realizes actually, no, Batman's it's, taken them out. Yeah, and Gon's like, You didn't kill any, did you? And then Batman's like, No, yeah, <laughs> it was I, kind of a bit like that, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, it's like Gordon was the only good cop left. Yeah, no, it was. And I remember we, it was still the original premise of the film was meant to still play, take place quite early in Batman's career, so a lot of the GCPD officers weren't trustworthy of him. Um, yeah. he'd managed to just pull Gordon alongside him. Sorry. <clears throat> um, but yeah, uh, should we keep going? Yep, absolutely. So three, three two, two, one, go. go. So this bit here where you hear um, a voice come Isn't in. Isn't it? It's me. <laughs> oh, it was you. <laughs> um, here's what I love Stop this. changing your voice, mate. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love this shot. This is a very nice CGI shot. Beautiful, isn't it? Uh, and... Shall we talk about this next scene? <laughs> well, that's, that's an interesting one. <laughs> this is a, oh, I love the little suit up here. Um, that's quite nice as, as well. Shot on a green screen, very late into production. Uh, this is a full CGI shot, as is the Batwing. In a second, that's a full CGI shot. I should hope so. As <laughs> you made one of them, good on you. So, should we pause it? Three, <laughs> two, two, one, pause. Go. Okay, so five minutes twenty. What did you say? Five minutes twenty. Uh, no, I'm moving. I'm, I'm moving forward a second. <laughs> oh, that's gonna be a pain. Okay, actually, let's uh, just okay. Uh, you, you just play play yours. There we go. <laughs> okay, let's just play it for a second. Three, two, one. Two, one. Play. Okay, so we'll just talk through this scene dead quickly because it's an interesting one. Um, this scene was completely different. <laughs> no, it was because we weren't actually saying half of that stuff. <laughs> half this. The only time, if you if you notice with this scene, basically, um, whenever the cameras off our faces when we're speaking, the dialogue's completely different to what we were originally saying. We were saying, yeah, we had to change it because obviously, because obviously, part of the plot had changed. Uh, we really wanted to use this bit. Yeah. Well, I'll say we, you did. Uh, <laughs> but it was good for what it was. The only thing is, um, we had to re-record our lines. So, yeah. Okay, so let's pause it in three, two, two one, one. Pause. Go. 6-11. Yes. Yes. Um, so, yeah, let's just briefly talk a bit further on that. So that was, again, that was about, I'd say... I think that was the summer of 2018 we shot that. And the reason why that springs into mind is because I remember we were shooting it at my house at the time. In your living room. We were in our <laughs> living room. Okay, so we had a full green screen wall set up. And for each time me and Carl were set switching, the camera never moved. For each time me and Carl were switching um, who had the close-up, we had to move all the lighting around to fake the shot. <laughs> Uh, which is really fun. It was really fun, but at the same pain. time, it was a pain. Um, <laughs> and that that scene when we were shooting it, that was so fun to shoot. That was one of my favourite shoot days we had because we, we were all um, in in a location that we weren't timed for or anything like that. So um, we had the time to get everything we needed, which was um, important. And we could all just have a laugh, really. Yeah, um, and also that that shoot day uh, gave birth to um, Jonathan's sassy face. 
Oh, yeah, then. <laughs> yes, the blue steel. Um, for those who have seen the blooper reel, they'll know exactly what uh, we mean there. Basically, I forgot my lines halfway through a take, but as opposed to just cutting the take and restarting just it, it you. <laughs> I tried getting back into character. I'm not an actor, ladies and gentlemen, so I did the sassiest <laughs> sass face that ever lived. Um and yeah, like, check it out in the blooper reel. Yeah, just watch the blooper reel. It's, you'll see it if you go onto our channel. Oh, God. And hear me getting told off, um, our assistant director saying, Carl, get in frame. <laughs> yeah, multiple <laughs> times. <laughs> okay, so um, the next scene is a really, really cool scene. Uh, Shall we play it? Okay, three, two, one, one play. Go. Matthew is just. An enigma. Yes. So all the paintings in this scene, um, I painted. <laughs> oh, you painted them? Yeah, so we needed, we needed some paintings and we had a day to shoot. Um, and prior to shooting, um, I had to do them all in like three hours. So they look a mess, but I knew they'd be out of focus, so it didn't really matter. It did that three hours, though. That's, that's actually... Good. Well, there's three paintings there. Oh, you only ever see two of them. Um, yeah. Oh, this take here of him throwing the glass oh, no. took so many attempts to do because <laughs> the glass kept flying all over the show. Wasn't it like a plastic glass? It was. So it was really light in the wind. Oh, I absolutely, I absolutely love it. If Matthew it. squeezed my cheeks like that, I, I couldn't take him seriously. I know, I know. Be in the fits. <laughs> this was one of the longest takes to get on the day. I think we did about ten takes of this one shot. Because Matthew oh, I'm getting the cheek squished about twenty times. Well Matthew kept moving out of frame, which was hilarious because Danny behind the camera would shout at him. Oh, there's also a take where he looks directly at the camera. Oh yes, that's in the blooper reel. <laughs> and then they nailed this second time round where she pushes in. And that shot there, oh, this shot's reversed of Luke. Um, and then, oh, it's mysterious. Um, the actors here, we shot them com at a completely different time because we needed to get all their stuff done and out of the way. Um, so let's just pause this for a second. In okay. three. Two, two, one, one pause. Eight sixteen. Yes. Wow. So, um, <clears throat> so for this shot here, oh, this was a interesting shot to do. This, um, this is all one take, and basically what happened here is uh, Danny, who was the assistant director on the day, um, he set up the camera at a wide shot, and I've added fake camera movements to it, and. If you, if you look, I I, I'm going to have to upload it separately, but I appear here and uh, I take the first thug out and then I just appear, like, I, I appear out of nowhere with the second thug. Um, but the reason why I appear out of nowhere is because if you see the unedited version of this, I'm crawling around in the background tripping over my cave. <laughs> Genuinely. Because the thug falls, but on the actual take, he falls on my cape. So I'm stuck pinned to the floor. <laughs> and I know I can't miss my cue to get Louis with his uh, pistol. So um, I pull myself from under this, this um, dead body. Uh, I stumble behind the table at the back. Again, I'll put the unedited version up somewhere. But I stumble around in the background. And um, then I get Louis with his gun. I sneak up from him from behind the table. So um, basically through the majority of the shot, I had to mask myself out of it. So it looks like I kind of just appear out of nowhere. Um, I don't think it's jarring or anything, but mm. it's one of those where behind the scenes is a lot more annoying and not many people know how much went into this one shot. <laughs> okay, you ready to play? Okay, three, three two, one, one, play. Okay, so I appear here. Dun, 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 dun. 
So at this point, I'm pinned on the floor. <laughs> I did not know that. And then I appear here. Boom, boom. Um, and this shot with Jake at the side here. I'm much shorter than Jake, so I like, ran in on my tiptoes. So I looked a bit similar size to him. Okay, so um, let's pause in three, two, one, and pause. Eight fifty-five. Okay, so uh, is is it with? Am I on screen? Hey. Is it me or Matthew on screen? No, it's Matthew who's gone. Okay, just pause it and play it there quick. Okay. There we go with you. Okay, so it's me. Again, this shot. <laughs> This one shot, we did not shoot on the day. We did not shoot it on the day, so I had to shoot this on a green screen, uh, really late into production. No one knows how integral this shot actually is, because it's all it is is me running out of frame. But because we couldn't get it on the day, and we only got Luke swinging his arm, in the original cut, it looked like he was just hitting no one. It didn't make sense at all. <laughs> So, um, it does now in a way, it do, it, <laughs> ma it makes a bit more sense, it doesn't make complete sense. Um, like you'll see in a few seconds' time, he electrocutes someone. Um, no, um, Luke gets electrocuted, but you don't see who does it. Originally, it was meant to be Batman who span, um, like a gadget on the floor and it electrocuted him, but we didn't have time to shoot it, so. It's kind of ambiguous now. Was it the Joker who electrocuted him, or was it Batman who electrocuted him? So I don't know. It kind of works in a way, I would say. It does work a bit. Um, so let's play it. Three, two, two, one, play. I nearly broke my back with that stunt. I bet you did. I love the smoke coming up there with his body. Tried. Oh, this this bit where I throw this painting. That must have been painful if you painted that. Uh, no, no, it wasn't. But in this take, you'll see Matthew looked off camera for a bit too long. Because Luke was sat off camera to where I was throwing that painting. I nearly hit Luke in the face. <laughs> it was so much. Okay, so let's pause this in three, two, one. Whoa. Pause. Nine forty-three. Hey! Yeah. hey. <laughs> I'm I know. So this was one of the later things we shot. This is about. I'd say a couple. This of was months. March. No, sorry, February twenty fifth, twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Yeah. Um. So we had a two-day shoot in Sambro. Um. And it was, I, I, I cannot thank um, Nicky Samuels enough for letting me do this. Uh, we had the full run of the building and the warehouse for two days. Um, and we got so much stuff there. So basically, um, this, this actual moment here, this scene, we were meant to have like 15 people turn up, weren't we? Four. Four <laughs> people turned up. Including your mum. <laughs> Including my mum, who was the GCN woman there, who um, yeah, that, that's uh, the stretching out. Ray pawns off. So um, this shoot was so painful to do because I had to completely change everything on the fly to how we originally wanted it done. We originally, we wanted it as a nice panning shot with loads of extras in the background, but because of um, obviously who turned up. I had to make it a tracking shot following Ray, but so you couldn't see anyone in the background. Um, you can hear like some photographer noises and bits and bobs, and it kind of gives the illusion that someone's there. But sadly, um, it didn't give it show. the illusion that I wanted it to give. Um, but it works for the moment. And uh, in this scene, <coughs> um, another thing that not many people understand is and, and Carl, let let me ask you a question here. Where whereabouts is this scene supposed to take place? Like well, lo where? location wise. Well this is meant to be outside the museum, isn't it? It is, isn't it? 
But oh, yeah. someone made a very good point to me that it kind of feels like they're on separate sides of the city, which, hey, it's fair enough. I, I don't really mind. It, they've basically said to me it feels like another crime scene because yeah. the person who we see who runs away um, isn't in the museum. No. But it's He's... like, whatever. <laughs> you know, it, it works. <laughs> it works for the what it is. Um, but so, like, from what I gather, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not just saying this because obviously I oversaw this being made. It's it's kind of it's like, hey, it's getting in the way. It, it just sounds like they've captured one, but he's just managed to break himself free. Well, that was, yeah, that was meant to be the uh, obvious yeah. sort of thing that was going on, but... Yeah. Um, it wasn't a complete, you know, a disaster per se. It was just, you know, just work with, work with what we got. And, you know, it was... We'll put it this way. No one's put it in the comment section. So exactly. I don't think it's been No at one's all. mentioned anything about these scenes. A lot of these scenes as well, not many people know, obviously Carl does, they were shot on uh, an iPhone 10 or 7? Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think I it remember... It was an iPhone, I just don't know which. Early into the production... Not, no, sorry, later in the production, uh, I showed you some of the footage from uh, my phone and you you were really impressed with it, so... Oh, yes, because you were showing me scenes from... Was it? I don't know if it was the one with the the the, the Joker cheat, uh, Joker cheat, Joker teeth chattering. Was it yes, that one? yes, yes, yes. It was. Was it that um, one? And um, again, that's another shot that another scene we'll get to later that we didn't put in the film in the end. Um, but yeah, a lot of this stuff was shot on an iPhone. Uh, not no one's mentioned that at all. So I think that's a big testimony to like how if if you're telling a comprehensive story that makes sense. Yeah, uh, in a greater narrative, it doesn't really matter what you're shooting on. What yeah. matters is what you're sort of trying to say through. <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. Visual language. So, should we play it and get on a bit more? Let's do it. Three, so, one, two, two three, one. go. That confused more. me. So Ray jumped onto the production quite later on, but he he's absolutely brilliant. Were you um, Ray's going to be in Relic of the Jedi, um, and I cannot wait. I'm going to smoke with your bare hands. Uh, the that light in the background. Can you see that light in the background? Yeah, it's a fake well, light. Like flickering like that. It's a fake light. I had to put it in there so it looked like nighttime. <laughs> well, it, it works. It does work. It, it was just. It's already been nighttime, but it could be the early hours of the morning. Exactly. Um, it could be like three, four, like about four o'clock, something like that. So here's the thug getting away, and this is where the film starts to speed up a bit. And usually I don't like really shaky footage, but I think when it's for a few seconds and the intention is meant to be that everything's crazy, I think it works like that then. Just think Quantum of Solace. I love this shot here where you're all running um, away from the camera. I think it's really nice. And I think everything here that's shot on an iPhone, you cannot tell. Come on, punk. Let's just go quietly. The JCKD. You've got nowhere to run. Surrender now and you won't be hurt. It might not sound it, but that's actually me dubbing my own voice for that bit, isn't it? Yeah. For, yeah. A, lot, for a lot of this here, uh, we had to do that. Of the majority of it, you can't tell. There's just a couple of lines here and there that we, because our one of our microphones broke on the day, we had no idea what we'd said on the fly. Um, so as opposed to just using worse takes, we we used the best takes and tried to just implement what we thought was going on. Yeah, because like obviously people say go by the script. Well, sometimes you don't go exactly by the script. Yeah. Sometimes obviously devise it to a way to sort of suit how you would say it. And it's one you know, thing. It might sound better if you say it a different way, depending on the kind of person you are. If it makes sense. Yeah. No. Definitely. So I think here as well, no one's mentioned this, which I th again it makes sense in the story that this mm -hmm. character's waiting for uh, the sound of the. The, um, the bell of the church to sort of stand down. The elevator sound. Yes, yes, oh, yes. Oh, the truck makes an appearance in this, we've got to mention. 
So this was again shot in Sambro, a different side of the building where we had an elevator. Again, all this bit here is shot on an iPhone and you, you can't tell. That's really good, mind. Honestly, I wouldn't have thought that was an iPhone. No, definitely not. And if you listen to the person that comes in, I that was, was a, that's me. <laughs> it is. Oh. That's the most. Di I think that's the most distant I've heard of you. If you get me, yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, it's like Alfred Hitchcock showing up in his old movie. So Bex had to take her shoes off in this scene because she was bigger than me. <laughs> And there's a take, there's a take where the, um, where Rob and Curtis stop him. Like I said, I'm mm -hmm. sorry, but can you take your shoes off because you're significantly taller than him? <laughs> oh, so it wasn't the sound then? No, there's no weird sound. Right? Okay, fair enough. So this scene is also shot in Sambro, um, yeah. and it looks like an interrogation room, which is crazy. <laughs> Because this room is what all those lines are on the wall. It's not like paper or anything like that. They're for um, putting uh, hooks on to put products on the wall. Oh, they got like the little indents in. Yeah, what? yeah. Um, but it works for the scene. Also, this stuff here where Carl's outside and it looks kind of like dawn or nighttime. Um, mm -hmm. It was all shot in bright daylight, and we had to edit it all in post. I do really like this scene uh, with the I think this is one of the best scenes in the film. Yeah, I completely agree. I think everyone is everyone's performance is brilliant and I think the, the way it's edited together, telling that story constantly back and forth with Harley and Joker, I think it really, really um, adds to the sort of relationship between them because in the script we sort of I don't know how you feel about this, but I, I feel like there's a there's a bit of a horrible history, no pun intended, uh, between the two of them. Yeah, and we're slowly finding out fra fragments of what's going on. I know. I love the way that Bex kind of made the character her own in this because she isn't a she isn't a stereotypical Harley Quinzel. I mean, not just because of. Because she didn't have blonde hair, but simply the way she portrays her, like this one's got a bit more of a front about her. Yeah, you know, like how she's, you know, other ones like she's more infatuated and very uh, sort of. I don't know. I can't really explain it as it were. But Bex totally killed this role. I completely agree, did. and I really want to work with Bex again in the future. She's she was um, she was attached to another project we, we, we want to work on in the future. I'm hoping she still wants to work on that project. Interestingly enough, I've never actually met her, like face to face. It's it's crazy. It seems, yeah. It's absolutely crazy. I haven't worked with Donald Trump either. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I should really be more respectful. Really. <laughs> what's, what, who's that? Who, what's, his, what's he called? It's called Brian Clark. That's Brian Clark. That's a. That's never worked with him. So <laughs> this is when it starts, sort of. The music starts getting lower and lower, and then eventually, obviously, we're breaking into a more... Um, everything starts to speed up a bit again. Um, so we get Carl coming in to the yeah. asylum, which was shot in the warehouse at Sambro. But I think the, the grand size of everything and this small person in this huge um, space sort of gives the illusion of how alone uh, Gordon is in the scene, and I am a small person. But the building was absolutely massive. You can see it all in the background there. None of that's CGI or anything. That was all. No, it's all real. It's all real. Here's my amazing stunt. Whoa! Oh wait, no wait. It's my amazing stunt. I did it. Oh yeah, no wait, 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 no. There's two. You slide here, and I jump over the table. Could I not have jumped? And you slid. <laughs> We did that take about ten times, and by the end of it, Carl couldn't walk. Yeah, I'm quite frail. I think, we, like, let's just pause it for a second. Three, okay. two, two, one, one. pause. pause. 16.59. Yep. <laughs> oh. um, I think with That's all up. the stuff where um, you're in the asylum, that was one of the first things we shot when we were in the building itself. Um because I love I love this shot. I know it's it, 
I know it sounds quite big headed because it's actually me. But being going through the warehouse like that, that is that is great. I love that. It's I, I love that you can see like the the literally the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Um yeah. Hey, do you know what? I never actually noticed that before. I know you mention it. The, there there is a lot of like visual I, I do have a visual explanation for a lot of the things that we shoot. See, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to put the video into this, but Carl, can you see what's going on at the minute on my end? Yeah, you've, you've got the dog, and it looks like you. What's she doing? The dog is balancing <laughs> on me and the piano in front of me. Oh, I didn't realize you had a piano there. Yeah, now she's oh, freaking that's out. What, you know the Westworld theme at the beginning. Yeah, I actually thought it was something you comprised at first, but then when I figured out where the tune had come from, I thought, oh, I thought you made that up. I used to be able to play it on the piano, but I, it's a very complicated tune to learn, so I, I didn't finish yeah. learning the rest, I forgot. Um, yeah. But also, just back to that uh, one take before that we did where you were sliding across the floor, I remember on the actual initial take that we did, um, I asked you to just run, and just so I could see you get the focus right and everything, Yeah. and you didn't really hear me, and you just jumped into frame, and I was like... Oh, yeah, oh my God, like... Carl, I was not <laughs> recording. <laughs> well, I'm not going to hear you. I am partially deaf, so I'm, I'm not going to hear you. I know, you. and I've, I didn't realise until like I wish, like, tried to whisper it to you. Oh, don't whisper things, I won't hear you. Oh, I know. Um, <laughs> is there anything else you want to say on this bit before we move on? Um, I look great in this. You really do. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two... two. One, go. And then I love the flip reverse shot now. Really nice. Do look good. I was like, walk slowly. I can't get you in focus. I was tense. You really were. And then I love this this slow pan here where we follow you to the door. There's only one thing I don't like about this shot. And that is, I don't know if you can see it, but my hair looks significantly different. I look like I'm wearing a toupee. If you have a look very carefully, it looks like it's just placed on my head. Oh, it does. That's weird. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. No, that is my genuine hair, people. And that's my moustache, too. But in some shots, it just looks like I'm wearing a toupee. Oh, this is one of my favourite on-the-fly moments that we had on set. Matthew trying to open the door with his foot. Oh, that just made me laugh. I thought, was that intended first or what? Well, we said, should we, should we try a take where he does that? Yeah, um, there we go. And we did. And it was really, really nice. Um, and also... I don't know. I thought if that was in, like, it wasn't meant to happen at first, but then you keep it anyway. But another thing that's really funny about this is we had another um, sort of funny moment in, the, in this scene where... Um, where I first walk into the room with Matthew, holding him as the Joker, I yeah. threw him into the chair. Oh. And um, we did a shot where it was a long shot, and I threw him into the chair, and it tips over with him in it. <laughs> it was meant to, and then I pull him back it's up into to frame. Laughing like the Joker would. Yeah, but I, it was. I don't know why we didn't use it at the end of the day, but I'll try and find that and put that up separately. That's fine. Um. So. Here you're seeing lots of different things that are in cut together. Um, you can see the colour of my cheeks because the amount of running about I did in that building. Oh my god! Yeah, actually shows. And a lot of these have had to be colour corrected to an extreme. Like one one thing that's not no, noticeable. I'm actually purple. Yeah, one thing that's, that's not purple. noticeable uh, unless you look for it is yeah, the fact true. that um, over the barrels of every gun, I've had to replace it with a grey barrel because it was orange, so we didn't get. Uh, arrested or anything? I'm watching Bex's performance again. I'm sorry I'm going back to this, but there's a reason she was a finalist nomination for yeah. Best Actress for this. There's a yeah. reason for it. Um, for those of you who are watching this who don't know, we were um, lucky enough to be finalists in the Azola Rica Fan Film Awards, and we were with great company like um, Jamie Costa, who's um, who was being nominated for Kenobi a Star Wars fan film, um, and uh, the, the talented guys who did um, the Crime Alley film for Batman. It's an absolutely amazing film. I haven't actually watched that yet. If you, if you guys uh, could go to all these 
all the uh, pages that we put in the description bar, please do, because these people are absolutely amazing. But yeah, Bex was a finalist as an actress, as leading actress. And like Carl said, there's a, there's a reason. And we really hope to work with Bex soon again because um, she's an absolutely amazing person. And she's she'll go that extra mile on set and it really, oh, yeah. really shows. Sorry, I'm just breaking up a dog fight then. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, so basically a rule that we had on set is unless you hear cut just keep going so when she says okay here we were both finished but I was kind of waiting for it to walk off frame so we could cut into the next scene um, some people that I've talked to was like was that not a bit of an awkward pause and my argument to that was oh let, actually let's just pause it three In, two, two one. one not yet oh wait I know what you're waiting for. I know exactly what you're waiting for. Okay, let's just wait. Three, Three two, two, one. one. Hey, I'm a 21-16. So am I. Wee. Um, so just stay quickly talking about the thing that um, when she walks off, I think it's sort of because um, there's that long pause between the, the our last line and then Bex walking off. I think it kind of shows the shock that she's in as a character. Mm -hmm. Um... But quickly on this one, <laughs> this one's an interesting one. So if and no one's going to have noticed this, it's only going to have been for the eagle-eyed viewers, really. Actually, no, we've had a couple of people that have actually noticed. Really? You people have noticed. So we went to a very, <laughs> very big effort here of filling this notice board full of information to do with the film. So whether it's um, character mug shots, which you can see there in the foreground, uh, newspaper clippings, uh, there's a Metropolis and the Flying Grayson's poster, uh, yeah. and then even a schedule of doctors on the psychiatric ward. Um, it was so fun decorating this section of the building, and it yeah. really did make it feel like Arkham Asylum, didn't it? Oh yeah, definitely. And I think what was good about the mugshots as well, it was it was like a reminder that this isn't just a standalone film, that this is actually a sequel. It's like, you know, there there are references to characters from the previous film. Yeah. You know. Um it, just a just a very brief one. But um but then going back onto that topic, the only actor that reprised his primary role was it one of the characters there, wasn't it? The one on the left. Yes, it was uh, Jack Roberts who plays Clinton Baptiste in the film. He's the only one who reprised the same role. And <laughs> if if I I'll say it now, the scene that Jack has later on in the film absolutely yeah. steals the scene, and um, yeah, that's probably that's my favorite. The, best scene, the second best one. That's my favorite scene of the film, personally, um, only because. It, for me personally, it feels like the the best decorated, the best um, shot, and the best edited together. Oh yeah. Uh, Plus, yeah. Jack, Jack is a performer as well. I mean, I know I don't think he classes himself as an actor yet. He can perform. He yeah. is fantastic. Like Jack, can, Jack's got uh, a couple of things in this film that he's done, but uh, Jack doesn't again consider himself an actor, but. If you give him a line or a script to do, he'll bring it to life that no other actor, I think, could. I think the way he performs things with so much enthusiasm and he'll just throw himself around set. Yeah. Um, it's it's really, really interesting. And, again, I want to work with Jack on other product projects. He's my cousin, um, but he doesn't really do this full time. So it's one yeah. thing that I'm trying to push him to do. I think for like the for the first film, the Shattered Cowl, I had nothing to do with that film. I was I wasn't even around at this point. But for me, he kind of stole the show for that yeah. one. You know, he was definitely the best thing about that film, I would say. And yeah, in this one, he still he still got it. Yet he he plays the same character. Yet he's Evolved. he plays him very differently yeah. in a way. He's, he's got more of a front. He's he's a lot more confident. Oh, he's a lot more confident, yeah. and I love that transformation we've got. Even if it's only for a brief moment, that was great to have. I would say for yeah. this. So, well, you get to see more of that later if you haven't seen the film already. Yeah, <laughs> if you've not seen the film already, what are you doing here? We're like an hour in. You should be elsewhere right now. 
It's only we're just spoiling it for you. We're really just spoiling it. We're picking <laughs> this film apart. Um, so you ready to play, Carl? Okay, I'm ready. Three, Three two, two, one, one go. Play. So this is a, a map that um, was already existing from the from uh, online material, and Carl just improvised where he was putting his finger there. I was just like, "Well, follow your finger, Carl. It's absolutely fine." It worked. It worked. Ish. <laughs> then this is an interesting. This is an interesting bit now, where um, Harley picks up the phone to Jonathan Crane. So this is the first time we're in, not Jonathan oh, Crane, Jonathan Crane, Thomas Elliot. Sorry. So this is the first time we're introduced to Thomas Elliot in the film, and this script had to be drastically altered when they're talking to each other to actually make sense, because in the original script that Curtis wrote with um, Beck's lines still to come, um, because these were shot quite a distance apart, um, they didn't make sense. So on the day I had to be like, "Um, okay, we need to fix this. Beck, say this, say this, say this. And we managed to edit it together in a way where it looks like there's something suspicious with Thomas, but the audience isn't privy to it yet. And um, obviously, Harleen is very innocent and very unaware of what's to come. He looks very shifty there, he walks off. I absolutely love working with Danny Childs, and I really hope I get to work with him again. This is... Okay, so um, this I one... The <laughs> this one is the most painful scene that we edited there was several times in the film where I nearly took it out because um, the audio was so hard to try and guess and sync up this is one of the instances where the mic was broken but we didn't know it was broken until post production uh, because it was still reading on the uh, camera and everything but um, yeah this scene was impossible to take out like we I was trying to take it out, but it was impossible because it had so much integral information that the audience needed to know. Um, like the two characters actually meeting up. If you were, if we would have just cut to a scene where they were together, it's like, when the hell did they meet up? Well, that's it. Yeah. So, so what? Yeah, because obviously we had to reconnect. Because I had to sort of like read my lips to see what I was saying, and I was talking that fast and talking that much garbage. Yeah. I couldn't understand myself and I just thought I can't even follow the script because I didn't go directly yeah. from it. So I said, Well, Jonathan, we're going to have to have some shots that are on you when I'm talking. Yeah. Just so- <laughs> but I think, again, it's it's only noticeable for a couple of lines. Only for a few lines for this bit, yeah. I mean, the what the scene after this with me and you, that worked really well. It really. Oh, oh, one second. In that shot there. Oh, let's just pause. Three, two, two. One pause. Twenty four eleven. Yes. Woo. Um. So with the scene prior to that, um, no, with the scene where we're running, if the audience goes back and watches that scene, I can't pull it up again because we're obviously synced up here. My cape was hanging off. <laughs> we're um, meant to put that at the end for the. Duh, 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 yeah, duh, duh, we we shot that as like. A, of us. <laughs> when, when we were working, when we were working in central buildings, we basically shot a load of transition scenes, just little shots we could put in between scenes, so it sort of filled in yeah. the space of a character. Mm-hmm. And um, with that one, we were just I don't I don't think at the time as well I was like really sure if we'd use it. I'm glad we'd shot it now, but uh, when we were shooting in that, <laughs> yeah. But when we were shooting in that hallway, I don't know if you remember, Carl, but there was a woman who had an office in that hallway. Oh, yeah, because she came out and she wanted a picture with us. She got a picture with us, and we never got her name or anything, so we don't have that picture, and I'm really, really gutted. Oh, wait, I mean, she did take it on her own phone, in all fairness, so, like... I know, I know. Um, But, yeah, um, this next scene now, I want the audience to realise that every bit between these two characters here was shot on a completely different day to each other. See, I wouldn't have guessed that, to be honest. It was shot on two completely different cameras and two completely different days Um, because you'll see that there's never a shot where they're actually together and it's the same throughout the whole film. Every time... There isn't. What? There isn't, is there? No, every time that you see the scene with Bex, Tom and Danny... They're not even shooting that scene together. So um, with this scene, 
um, this act, this stuff with Harley here was the last stuff we ever shot. Uh, this is the last thing we ever shot, and oh, I thought it was before me. No, we shot this 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 exact <laughs> scene here from Beck's point of view. We shot a day before the premiere. Flip me. I know, I know, I know. Uh, we had Bex up for the premiere, <laughs> so I was like, "Can you come a day early so we can okay. shoot, shoot some extra stuff with you?" And she she was completely up for it. We all went for a meal afterwards, and I was sat there at that meal thinking, "How the hell am I going to get this finished for tomorrow?" Um, and for those who don't know, I didn't get it finished for tomorrow. I got half of the film finished, and we ended on a on this scene. In fact, we ended it on a cliffhanger um, where Thomas reveals um, his everything to not everything, but Thomas, not Thomas, Jesus Christ, Jonathan Crane reveals um, what's going on to Harley. Um, and it cut there, and it said um, to be even continued. reveal anything. It was just more a case of what happened. She asked him to stop the lockdown. And he goes, "No, Harley. Why would I do that?" You just see a grin, and then and it cut. It cut on the actual premiere, and the odd. I remember what really made me feel really warm inside was hearing like a few people like what, like that in the background, because obviously. Um, we everyone in every all the actors in the room who were sat at the front, we knew what was happening. We knew what was going to happen next, but to to the expanded audience in the background, no one had a clue. So they were really annoyed at me that I didn't feature the full thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, so remember every time you see the, these two or three together, that it's shot on a completely different day, and I don't think it shows. Nah, not really. Ooh. Okay, another thing as well to watch out for in this scene is because there was so much light coming in the room, we had to duct tape the curtain shut. It's a what? We had to duct tape the sh uh, curtain shut. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> it's what about this stuff? I don't even know. Watch out! Watch out for some of this, Carl. Seriously. I know. I'm gonna have to. I'm, I'm gonna have to watch this now. <laughs> Bloody. Um. Okay, you ready? Okay. Three, two, two one, one, go. Play. We did a nice little push pull on an iPhone there. That was good. Um, Tom is terrifying as Jonathan Craig. He really is. I think he has such an unsettling approach. Look, the duct tape in the background. Watch, 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 watch. Why don't you uh, go back to the Watch the duct tape. Look at the duct tape. How does that not fit? It's, it's green as well. <laughs> green duct tape. Um, this was so hard to colour match this scene because obviously they were shot on two different days. I had to make sure that the backgrounds were the exact same shades, that the the coats were both had a blue tint to them. Uh, it was really difficult. Oh, it's so creepy. <laughs> oh, he is, isn't he? Uh, Not cliffhanger people. Yeah, that was how the premiere ended, and then we had little. A little trailer afterwards. So this is the moment where Batman finds Quincy Sharp's body, um, and again with this, you've got to remember that this building here, and then the building that Carl's in in the next shot, the two completely different buildings. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think it shows. <laughs> this again was one of the last things we shot. Well. I will get to uh, later what the last scene we shot with you was, Carl. I, th I don't know if you remember what it was. I think it was the... Was it not the heart-to-heart -heart scene? Yeah, yeah, it was the heart-to-heart -heart scene. Yes, because I had to ruin my shirt after we did this. <laughs> yep, yep. So this was... Um, this is all ADR'd as well. This is all voiceover, but this is probably the best scene where you can't tell. I didn't even get ahead of him. And then turn them off. I think this one's probably the the best way you really can't tell it's voiced over. If I was to use any of them for my show reel, I'd probably use this one. Yeah. Yeah, try. I've noticed how, how croaky my voice is at that point. Yeah. So here, it's obviously meant to be um, Jonathan Crane. Let me her. guess, it's you. It's me pulling her along. <laughs> So again here, these two are shot on a completely different day to Vex here. Like Peter Jackson likes to give himself a cameo, but you just give yourself about 20. Yep. <laughs> what can I say, Carl? 
Um, I, lo- I love this scene again. Um, I think Danny and uh, Tom together. So they, cre- they have such an eerie presence together. It's really, really creepy. But they're just. I mean, it was Danny's accent changes at this point. It was British originally, now it was American. <laughs> I know. Um, well, you can't really tell unless you're looking out for it, can you? Oh, I didn't look out for it. I just noticed it. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't really matter. No, at the end of the day, you're, you're more focused on what's going on. As... Hey, people's accents do change. It's like um, in Star Wars A New Hope. No one realises that when you first see Princess Leia, she talks in an English accent. She does, doesn't she? And then she talks later on in the phone. She talks oh my goodness, yeah, accent. she does. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Some you Star Wars can't criticize us. Um, no, why would I do that? What are you playing? I think it really does help with this scene to have an actual red light on set. I love the music you chose for this, the Two Face Remembers bit. Yeah, this is from the animated Wait. series. And to be honest, this is one of the other sequences that I absolutely adore because I love seeing all the different perspectives going on in the asylum. There was one bit that annoyed me about this. I oh. wish you'd used a recording that was a recording much better. Well, what had happened, Carl, is I'll be honest with you here, I did use your recording because you sent it to me. I think yeah. a few weeks before the film came out. Yes. yes. And my, at the time, I was having trouble say, like, when my computer kept crashing with the film because the film's that big and that long. Yeah. That it must have crashed when I was in between saves and I'd never gone back to check if I'd, if the right one had saved with the right um, voiceover. But at the end of the day, it's one of those small annoyances. That yeah, good job. The only... with the other 5,000 <laughs> <laughs> but it's one of those small things that will only, only annoy us that's uh, fine no one else is bothered about it so. I love this shot here uh, yeah. Jonathan yeah I, I can't wait to, for uh, everyone to see obviously now when we move on to Relic of the Jedi we're using uh, new camera um, yes. which is going to have so many amazing capabilities for what we can achieve on the film. Well, yeah, you've got to think of how much you know, you've know you improved from the Shattered Cowl to Terror of Arkham and just think of how much further we'll go Relic of the Jedi. So, you know, things are on the rise, definitely. And I can't wait for people just to hear about more of the projects. That, I mean, me and Carl had a meeting on Tuesday or Monday and we were speaking about um, four or five projects that we both want to keep moving forward with, and guys are absolutely exciting. I'm writing some of them. He is. So here's okay. The implication here is meant to be that they're Jim Gordon's glasses. Um. So let's pause it in three, two, one. Pause. Thirty twelve. Yep. Uh, what can you see? Uh, Batman's foot. Oh, yeah, that's okay. So can I. Um, so, with this next shot, you're going to see... Okay, so, this is very complex to explain. So, I'm on my knee here, and you'll see there's light coming in from the right-hand side, and as the audience, subliminally, what you're thinking is that there's a space there, um, there's a space just like, whether it's a door or whatever, um, so it makes the next shot more believable, subliminally. Um, but the next shot is basically Jack as Clinton. I look up and he swings a piece of wood and hits me in the face. That was actually a scene that was completely separate to all of this originally. Um, we shot that first, that was the first, one of the first things we shot, maybe the second thing. That was, that was actually, we shot that after, um, we shot Kyle's first scenes in the film. Um, so... We had a scene originally where um, Batman went to Crane's office and found Harley's blood all over the office. Um, And then as he's leaving the room, um, he stumbled across a really huge file on the floor. And as he leant down to look at it, it was actually a file. I can't reveal what the file was because it'll give a clue to what the next film is going to be. If we get get along to doing it. 
Oh, we will. But originally, that's when Batman gets on his knee, looks down, and then as he looks up, Clinton's there and hits him. Um, but I had to find a way of Batman <coughs> coming from this point to being in the chair in the, one of the next scenes. So the only viable option that I thought was to have, obviously, Jack hit me and just use these shots together. But, again, it's one of those where they're cut together um, and I don't think you can really tell. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree. I was about to say, Carl, do you, do you believe me there? Do you, do you not? I don't think you're lying, put it that way. So... So let, fine. let's just see how it let's just see how it looks when you play it actual like an actual scene. So three, two, two one, one play. play. So there he is, boom, hits me. It works for what it is, I think. Again, you're not really paying attention to where he is to warrant the change of scenery. I love this sequence. This is amazing. This even like before it was edited, it looked great. Yeah. And I love the lights change as they get to this save point. This is another one of the standout scenes for me personally. I think personally for me, there's like five scenes that I would take out of this. And, um, and ironically, they've all got individual actors in, separate actors. Um, oh. Everyone has a moment to shine in the film. Well, you know what my favourite moment is? See that soon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What I found about this film is it's actually quite quotable. You yeah. know, like when you're like the quotes of films, I find this one quite quotable. <laughs> I completely agree with you, Carl. So, well done to the writers. That are in here for Grim and Murder John. They just get to laugh it off and we let them off. The city deserves better. She deserves better. That's oh, the love, my, yeah. um, Danny's performance. I know. Everything. Molly talented the guy. I remember actually um, in post and um, pre-production. Sorry, when we were we did a costume shoot. I don't know if you remember for posters. Oh, and, no. um, yes. At the time, I had two Arkham jackets. Um, yes. I had a, a larger one and a smaller one, uh -huh. and I gave Tom the small one, and he tried it on, and I remember him being like really tight in it, and I said, "Oh, try on the bigger one," and he said, "No, I'll keep the small one because what I really liked about Jonathan Crane in the comics was the fact that he wouldn't spend money on new clothes because he didn't care; <laughs> he was more interested in the science of everything." So uh -huh. he deliberately wore that um, clothes that were too small for him just to give his performance a bit more structure. Yeah. I love this shot here. <laughs> this was a fun effect that I did where I distorted the lens around his face. Exactly, my Lord. Thomas bloody terrifying. I know, it's that smile. You play a good Freddy Krueger, do you not think? Carl? No, he's so lovely in real life as well. He's such a sweet, gentle natured guy. Yeah. I do think he'd play a really good Freddy Krueger. Oh, you think what I'm thinking? <laughs> oh, here okay, is. here's my favourite scene of the film. This music is actually from the beginning of Batman 1989. Oh, yeah, it took a lot of music from Batman's notes as well. Don't tell anyone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not a social no. <laughs> oh, there's Luke again. <laughs> I remember he came in with a handprint on his chest. I was like, Jesus, Luke, you're really in character. <laughs> I absolutely love Jack's performance. Yeah, his return and his character was just great because. Like there, throwing himself on the floor. I didn't ask him to throw himself on the floor. Do you know what? It's the hair that gets everywhere as well. It's like a... Yeah. <laughs> My only regret is that we scraped a bit of the face paint on Matthew's nose and I could not get it back on. 
It's not noticeable, but I think this is Matthew's best scene. Yeah, yeah I completely agree. I don't think as well a lot of people uh, give credit to the fact that these scenes were shot over like a year, year and a half with Matthew. And yeah. he keeps the, the exact same look through all of the scenes. Yeah, I'd like to say that I do, but I don't because I lost weight during production. Yeah, and again, that's not your fault. You, I think you, you, you explained to me you were ill at the time, so there's not anything that could yeah. have helped. It was kind of, it was ill, oh. and the fact that I just became a dad. I was carrying a baby everywhere. <laughs> it was the crap of a hill. Also, um, just, I'll, I'll mention something dead quick. No one know, notices, really, that in the first scene of this film in the museum, I have a beard, and in the next scene you see me, I do not have a beard. Yes, I noticed. Because originally, this, the film was meant to take place over two days. Yeah. But like Ar- Batman Arkham Asylum, one long night. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like Shirley. I absolutely love this action bit here. And a quick trivia, if you've seen the blooper reel, Oh, it might not be in the blooper reel. Or it might be, I can't remember. Um, I actually broke the handcuffs by accident. I wasn't meant to. No, I wasn't in the blooper reel. I love this. That's great, that one. Absolutely love it. Even this bit with Luke here, to get this in one take was... So it cuts away here to a news article because we didn't have time to shoot anything else. Um, it works. Yeah. Um, also, uh, the voice of Jack Ryder is Jack Roberts, who plays Clinton. You just seen getting pulled through the table. Yeah. Um, I think it adds a bit of context to what's going on to everyone outside of the asylum as well. Um, but the the idea is that whilst this news article is going on that Batman and Clinton are meant to be having a bit of a fight. Um, obviously, um, when you last see him, he's being pulled under a table. But what you're going to remember is at this point, Batman's got a stab wound. And he's yes. already he's been hit in the head by a 4x4. Four four. You know what I mean? He's not 100%. So, he's not fully there. So, yeah. Um, there's, there's I'm glad you used that picture of me because like we used like we, we filmed another scene, didn't we? Yeah. We decided to take a still shot from it. Yeah. Um, I absolutely oh, I, love this bit with... Uh, this is something as well that was shot really early on into production with... Um, um, oh, my God. Tom. My, oh. my brain wasn't working then. Oh, my God. Um, but we we didn't... The original um, dialogue for the scene wasn't really working. Um, but obviously, he's wearing a mask. So... We could completely change anything that we wanted to say. It was it's absolutely brilliant. I, I want to put more characters in masks in case I ever have to do this again. <laughs> but uh, I sent Tom this video and basically just asked him to give a slow performance. Um, really... Because I think that slow, methodical <laughs> thinking of what he's trying to come out with next adds to not only his social awkwardness, but the fact that he's constantly trying to think ahead to what he's going to say. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, did that even make sense? Probably not. Probably not. I, I got what you mean by that. If people disagree, then they can put a hateful comment in the sec. Please don't. Disturbing <laughs> <laughs> stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Police are urging citizens not to panic and to stay indoors because he's heroin. He improvised the end of this. I just had a script, a really horrible script ending, but he ended it really nicely. I was like, oh, that was lovely. Uh, he did good, man. That was lovely. So, here, okay, so. For that, nice. <laughs> so, well, nice. <laughs> here's an interesting one now. So. Three, two, one, pause. 38.59. Yep. Whoa. So, <laughs> this shot with Jack here <laughs> was completely green screened. <laughs> um, yeah. 
we couldn't we just, we couldn't go back to the location and shoot this scene, uh, and we had about a week before the film was coming out. So I said, "Can you get to my house? Uh, I've got your costume. Uh, I've got a green screen. Can you just come and do this performance?" So he said, "Yeah, absolutely." We shot this in my living room, um, and I had to basically with the background. It was from a shot later in the film that I had to basically comp everyone out of and blur like hell. Uh, again, I don't think you can tell, really. You kind of you can tell sort of it's green screen, but you can't tell that you sort of phase people out. Yeah, yeah. No, I, it I, it, it's fine. It works. Yeah. It, um, <laughs> but it was an absolute pain. It was. It was, really was a pain. Uh, because, as well, you can't really see on the final output, but he has, obviously, he's got long hair. Uh so I had to on the on the left hand side of the screen I had to comp a lot of his hair out, which is an mm-hmm. absolute pain in the ass. Yes. Um, and we didn't have time to shoot the reaction shots for me. So all we did was uh the shot of me looking up is the exact same shot that we used at the beginning <laughs> from the museum, <laughs> but I've just flipped it the other way around. Oh, you know what we noticed that, Jonathan. Um, so yeah, <laughs> and then when Carl comes in, you got to remember this is a, when Carl comes in. This that's a completely another day of shooting that we were there for. Yeah, this was like months before. <laughs> yeah, so it's three separate things going into one here. It's absolutely insane. Um, are you ready to keep going? Yeah, sure. Okay, three, two, two one, one, go. Delay. So yeah, that's me from the museum. <laughs> if you hear my dogs barking, I do apologise. My girlfriend has just arrived home. <laughs> Told you. <laughs> I love his return here. It's absolutely brilliant. <clears throat> absolutely brilliant. So, I'm so badass in this film. Yeah, it really is. But I, I love the fact that you do, you're not really thinking for a while, like, where where is he? Where's he gone? Do you mind to pause just for a second? Yeah, three, oh. two, two, one, pause. Oh. Uh, Jonathan, are you all right with me explaining like what just happened in that scene and what was originally meant to happen? Yeah, absolutely. Right, so so when I... Um, so you've just seen me shoot Clinton in the head. I had no idea who I was shooting then. Yes. Because uh, <laughs> yes, oh my god, I've not even thought about that. Yeah. Oh, see, originally we were meant to have another character reprise the role um, from the from the original film. It was meant to be. If you, any of you have seen the Shattered Cowl, um, the the villain in that was Prometheus. So we were re- originally going to um, have that character return, uh, but um, that ended up not happening towards the end. So for months on end. Jonathan said he was finishing the film, like editing up. So I just thought, well, hang on a minute, isn't there another bit to shoot? And then, um, so I didn't actually find out who the heck I was shooting until the film actually came out. I just thought, oh my God, I've killed him. I had no idea that I've just killed off the only character reprising his role from the original film. I mean, you never know. Clinton can survive a lot of things, so who knows if he's actually dead? Oh, yeah. Well, he could be. Uh, well. So- for all we know. Well, all I'll say, okay, is when yeah. we were talking about the structure of the narrative in the future, we did say, well, could Jack not be Solomon Grundy? Like, yes! <laughs> I said that! It was, it was such a, like, out there theory. It was like, that could actually be really, really cool. Oh, it so it cool. makes so much sense in a way. So uh, who knows what the future holds for Clinton Baptiste, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, come on, he's, he's got new. He's got new. <laughs> we'll talk about it at the end. <laughs> yes, we will. Um, you ready to keep going? Yeah, okay. 39.41. Yep. Right. Three, two, one, go. I love this transition. Yeah, the transition was really good. Uh, I don't know if you realise from this scene, but you probably have because you've seen the film. Um, one of my lines got deleted from the film. Yes, it did. That I'm sorry, one. Yeah. Uh, Look at it. I think when people watch it, they're just like, "Oh, my audio cut out there." They're not really paying attention, so it's fine. Uh-huh. But um, 
yeah, it was it was unfortunate, but there's nothing you can do about it now. The film's out there, so just keep moving forward. Yeah, we know for next time. I do really like this scene though. This scene was this scene took us a long time to shoot. I like the scene, but it's just a shame that the mic peaks. I know, because uh, we got the pain in the backside to record for. Because I'm, yeah, it's not even perfect for me. It really isn't. It's another difficult thing as well as when you're editing this to line everything up perfectly. Yes. Because on the day you might have said a, a line a specific way, and then when you dubbed it, you might say it slightly slower in some places. So I've got to splice it together. Well, that's it. Yeah. So. So sometimes you can tell. Sometimes, luckily, you can't. But I do. There was a there was a other bits that we did um, want to shoot originally for uh, James Gordon, but I think what we ended up with gives a nice arc to the character. I don't. I think obviously, if you add on top of what we've got, it would have been even better. But I don't well, think if we if we shot that scene, that would have been amazing. One. Yeah. But um, originally, Jim Gordon was going to have his character introduced uh, with his oh. wife at the beginning, but he ends up walking out on her to pursue his work. Right. He ends up choosing his work over his wife, and then that's what this scene's about. He's having a lot of regrets. Yeah. So it's a shame we couldn't shoot. Well, I mean, I would have loved to have done it. I'd go back and do it now if I could. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, but we did have the the shoot route planned. We were going to do it. Yeah. But there was a complications with the actress. Um, she had some medical issues that Unfortunately, she couldn't uh, make it to the day. Um, so it wasn't her fault. It was just it was no one's fault. But we 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 were literally up against the wall for time. We we did had we had no other time to shoot the film. So we had to just work with what we got. And what we've got, I think, works. It's another reason why, like I mentioned at the beginning of the film, where we're first introduced to uh, Gordon. Uh, obviously, at the time, he's. Um, like I said at the time, um, the scene was meant to take place halfway into the film as an introduction to his character, but um, we had to move it all the way to the beginning to sort of fill that space out a bit more. Um, so finishing up this scene now, um, you know, I think this is... If, if we could have had everything we wanted into the film, I think this would have taken place more... Like separate them. from the end of the film because I think as as a as characters, obviously this is the low point of their night, and then we need to peak it again. Um, originally, like you said, we did have more stuff with Gordon that we wanted to do. Um, we shot some stuff with him um, in the like sort of in the sewer system, but it took too long. Oh, I forgot all about that. It took too long to. Um, Render the CGI in that scene, so unfortunately we couldn't um, add that into the film. But the way that Gordon disappears uh, into the in the next scene we see him in, and then comes back at the end of the film, it's almost like um, he's rejuvenated. Like he's obviously, I'll explain more later on in the film. I, but, I get what you mean. Yeah, but it's like he's. He's got his everything together, um, and he's come back as a for the clean up operation, and then the night's complete. So let's just, I think we we'll move on to the next scene in a second here. Um, I can't actually remember. Oh yes, I can remember what happens next. Um, sorry, that's my um WhatsApp. I think that's gone off a few times. Yeah, it must be because I can. I do love that shot of us just sat there. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> that was actually really comfy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the... Uh, this was... Um, I don't know if you know what this is meant to be, Carl. Well, That sequence there with... Let's just pause it. Three, two, two one, one. Pause. pause. 4.48? Yes! Yay! So that scene there where um, to um, Thomas walks into that room, originally he was going to be talking to a prisoner. That was meant to be a confinement cell. 
on the Do you know what? I actually forgot. I actually forgot we even filmed this. When I thought, I thought, when did we film that? Yes. But now you just reminded me of what it was. But from where, the direction we wanted to take the film in, we decided to move away from that. So I didn't want to just have the shot useless, like, yeah. on the cutting room floor. So the way I wanted to incorporate it into it was by... Um, having it as a bit of a setup of why and how we got into this room here. So, um, this w- I think this Carl was the last thing we shot. Actually, yeah, I think it was this shot here. I think it was the last thing we shot. Oh no, it wasn't. It could oh, no, been. no, no, no. It was the it was the bit that comes after this. Yeah, yes, of course shot. it was. Oh my god. Yes. Um, so this is one of the last things we shot. Second last thing we shot. Yeah. Um, where I remembered where we need we needed to cut all this together now. So I was yeah. like, okay, let's just get a shot of us walking down here and reacting to someone in this room. And the room mm-hmm. that we walked into, do you remember what it was, Carl? Wasn't it a clean cupboard or something like that? It was the ladies' toilets. Oh, shit, yeah, it was, wasn't it? We knew, we knew <laughs> that there was no one in there because we were pretty much the only people in the building. So we were like, look, we're going to be in there for five seconds. Let's just get it over and done with. Yeah, we can um, explain. Yeah, yeah, sure. like there's nothing wrong with what we did. Um uh, so yeah, uh, then it moves on to the next scene, which was shot months before this. And if you notice there on the left hand side of my face, there is a blood smudge. Uh, and in the next scene, it's gone. You licked it off by then. Well, we'll get to that. Three, <laughs> two, two, one. one play. No. Oh, that music again! I love that music. Absolutely love it. But again, I had to make the room like almost greenish here, so it matched the. It wasn't like a jarring visual for when you <laughs> went into this room. Love that shot. Love that. Absolutely love it. This is one of my favorite scenes that I shot with another actor. Definitely, because oh, it was great. like a one-on-one intimate scene. Um, and in a minute, I, I hit the wall, and I didn't tell him I was going to hit the wall. I hurt my hand. There we go. I hurt my hand so badly doing that. Oh, I know. You told them afterwards, didn't you? I was like, this is like, I think it's just a plaster wall. And I hit it and it was a supporting wall. I think your performance for that bit was really good, mind. You know, because you do the voice really well for Batman. I like when I grab him by the throat in a second. Oh, it's so I don't know why, but Danny reminds me of like a character from like a 1980s sci fi film or something like that. I don't know why. Yeah. My head. Like something from like Reanimator. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that movie. might have been the inspiration you have now. Who knows? So this is the bit now where. See, it doesn't really make sense. It's the only bit that doesn't make sense. Why does it cut to us in a room, like cutting into a room? But I think you can kind of look past it. Um, Not really, because you would think after they've done the interrogation, um, you would think they're still looking for Crane, aren't they? And then they come across this. Yeah. And then when Jim thinks, ah, this is me getting out of here. Yeah. And Batman's like, well, no, I can't. This is my way out. But I do. We did have a lot more shots of the wall, but I didn't have time it's... to do the visual effects on them. But you know it's there. And that's what's important at the end of the day. I wouldn't mind using this for my show reel as well. This bit's all right. Yeah. I think the voice dub in here is pretty good as well. Yeah, we did it quite well, actually. I think there's just a couple of lines here and there that let it down and hit in places, but it's nothing nah. awful. It's not too noticeable unless you've watched it a few times and then you kind of nitpick it. Now, this is the moment where we kind of split what people thought, where Batman reveals his identity to oh. Gordon. Actually, no, it wasn't at this bit. What? No, it wasn't at this bit. It was, it was later on in the film. Huh? It wasn't at this bit. Well, I mean, yeah, there was the reveal, but it wasn't this bit that oh, people... Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Oh. I, I like the reveal here because it's almost like they don't care. They just don't care. Well, it's that and it's also the fact that I think that Bruce has got full trust in Gordon now. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. They, they, they both got, they're both like that now. Yeah. So I love my little look here. <laughs> that was the only acting I got complimented for through the whole film. <laughs> <laughs> People always ask why didn't I cut to Carl at this point because he had that hole behind him and I could I didn't have time to CGI it. That's the only reason why I didn't cut to him. Yeah, I didn't wonder that actually, but now I know. That's fair. Oh yeah, people actually ask where this came from. If uh, anyone's asking that question now, do you want to share that with them? Uh, yeah, one second. Three, two, two one. one. Pause. Pause. Forty-eight, fifty-three. Oh, 52. Oh, no. Pause it and play it. You're kidding. Me. Hang on. There. Hey. So, um, what were people asking for, sorry? They were asking because obviously, people obviously know that this isn't our footage, but it's footage that we could use. Yes. So, so people want to know, someone asked where this came from. I don't know if you want to, if someone hasn't seen the comments. Um, so, basically, um, all the stuff we use like this, stuff that's not that doesn't belong to us necessarily, is uh, all royalty-free footage, which you can find on uh, YouTube or um, Shutterstock or anything like that, really. Um, for anything free, um, you're probably best looking on YouTube, but you want to make sure that you're, you know, mm -hmm. if it's anything that anyone's got, like, a watermark over, make sure that you're asking for permission first. I use a lot of stock footage in this, um, but I've changed it in a way like the majority of it, I've like changed it. Whether I've added visual effects to it or whatever, um, to sort of separate it from yeah. the original footage. So for the last bits there, I color corrected them. Um, but for this one here, a lot of people really don't realize um, that the, the the complete sky background there was all replaced. Originally, it was just a flat white background. I I wanted it something a bit more contrasty. Um, so I put that sky in the background. Added some police lights. And also, when they, when they start to walk through the tunnel here, it's very brief, but I thought the detail was nice. Um, was on the left-hand wall, you see an Arkham badge. Um, so just watch for that in a second. Um, so, yeah, stock footage, basically the best thing to do is go on YouTube uh, if, you, if you're on a budget. Um, a lot of people as well, if you need, like, a cityscape shot or anything like that, a lot of people post drone footage. Um and they'll put in the description if you can use it or not, or if you can use it and give them credit. So just check, um, and at the end of the day, um, if you can't find what you're looking for, maybe think about writing something that's not as complicated or anything like that. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so three, two, two one. one, play. But you can't really see the Arkham badge, so oh, that's a shame. Nah, don't worry. So much. The dark night is a far strange. So, another one as well is people don't realise that this scene was completely different when we shot it. This was, one, again, one of the first things we shot. <laughs> and it was completely different to what it ended up being. Yes. Because originally, I'll, I'll reveal that Robin was in the film, and this scene was basically Crane had Robin hostage, and he was threatening to fill the room with poison gas. Um, I do love the whole um, finger on the trigger thing through the whole scene because it's. I explained to Carl the other day uh, that. It's the reason why Batman's not going for him. It's the it's the only reason why. I mean, Batman's fast, yes, but if no, that, that. all it takes is literally the movement of a thumb, yeah, to change so you, the uh, whole, that fast. Yeah, that's all it takes for this scene. Um, as well with this, I might as well just mention that that mask of Scarecrow is. I completely designed that from scratch. That was something that I sculpted from scratch. It's, really good. it's a one of a kind mask. There's no other in the world like it. That's what I'm saying. So no one can say you've ripped that off from such and such or yeah. like the Dark Knight or whatever. Or Prometheus. Batman works. 
I also talked to uh, Tom about how he wanted his Scarecrow costume to look because at the end of the day, you got to realise the only thing that he'd really need to be Scarecrow is this mask and glove. So the jacket that he wears here is just like a, a literally a jacket that's been destroyed. And we talked about, you never know, maybe he found this from an old patient or anything like that. And it just sort of gives it a bit more... It's character, isn't it? Yeah, it's sort of like a proto-Scarecrow. If we ever did Scarecrow again, I think we'd build up a bigger, bigger suit. So here we go. The reveal. So people were wondering, like, what the big problem with this bit was. Why reveal himself? I think I can provide an explanation, unless Jonathan has one on hand. Uh, no, the only thing that I want to say... Oh, let's pause it there quick. Three, two, two one, one, pause. 51.39. Yes. Um, so the only thing that I want to add is we're the first people in history to um, do a Batman reveal where he's still got the panda eyes. So uh, yeah, yes. I don't care what people think. Go on, Carl. So I, so the way I've sort of theorised um, Batman revealing himself to Scarecrow was, uh, do you mind if I show what the original ending was going to be? Go for it, Carl. So as Jonathan mentioned before, um, Robin was taken hostage. And then um, Robin says something like, don't do it, Bruce, or something like that. And Scarecrow's like, who is this Bruce you speak of? And he gives him an ultimatum to reveal his identity. Or I think it's either Robin gets killed or the room fills a poison gas. Well, same difference, really. <laughs> um, and then Batman obviously reveals himself. Now, obviously, we've used this old footage, and obviously, um, obviously Robin isn't there. So why Batman reveal himself? Well, if you notice in the, um, if you watch the film and you look in the synopsis, it says that Bruce Wayne has grown in strength, intelligence and numbers with the trust of the GCPD. But a new threat looms over Gotham City. The growing threats in Gotham are causing Bruce to question if Batman is truly needed in Gotham. Uh, so if we just stop at that bit there. So obviously Bruce Wayne at this point is questioning whether as, as, as I've just said there, if Gotham really needs Batman or not. Yes. So what he's doing at this bit is he's, this is just a hypothesis here, that he is willing to sacrifice his identity if it means spare in the city. Because Scarecrow only has to press that button and the whole city will be infected. Mm. But he's willing to give himself up if it means Crane not pressing that button. And as you've just seen there, Crane has just injected everything into Batman. So, and then, so in a way, for, for Crane, it's win-win. It's either he's infected the whole city or he's taken away their only saviour. Yeah. So, but then, as if you play, it doesn't work out that way. It, I don't know if that's the one way of looking at it, Jonathan. Yeah, I, I completely agree with what you said there. And what, I think it's really interesting if you pay attention to it over the film, it's the amount of identity crisis moments that Batman has that kind of foreshadow this happening. I mean, at the beginning of the film, when we see the intro, we see a, a shot of him looming, looking at his cowl. And yeah. There's almost an expression of like, can I keep doing this? And then further throughout the film, we see him being more reckless. Um, obviously, he reveals his identity to Gordon because... He needs that. But that, I think that conversation with Gordon, the two convers the last conversations we have with Gordon kind of cement the path that Batman's going to go down. So the first conversation <laughs> makes Batman realise that he's not the only one who's being affected by him being Batman and he needs to think of the grand picture and everyone else that could be uh, either a victim or accomplice to him. Uh, and then the second thing, uh, in the second conversation that he has with Gordon, Gordon basically says, like, look, I need to follow my own path. You need to follow your own path. You're Batman at the end of the day. You need help, but it can't be from me all the time. And mm -hmm. then that makes Batman think, as we see him walk to Crane's office, um, and almost makes him realise that, look, I'm Batman. And at this moment here, where he willingly lets Crane inject him with the fear toxin, he overcomes it mentally. And that's like the 
the final switch that makes him realise that this is the route that he needs to go down now. And originally, um, we shot another ending to the film that was slightly longer. Um, and I shot like uh, intermittent bits in between uh, when Batman was drugged here, um, where he woke up in the, th in the Monarch Theatre where his parents were obviously shot outside of. And it was going to be, a, we're going to have a bit of a sequence of um, all of Batman's fears coming to fruition. But the way that would have fit in this um, sort of wrap up here didn't really work because if, if Batman's dealing with his fears this late on to, into the movie, um, then there needs to be another period after that where he's accepting those fears. So unfortunately, they didn't just they just didn't click into place like I would have wanted them to. Um, but again, I'll upload the deleted scenes uh, after we upload this commentary. Actually, because I think people would be interested in seeing the amount that we actually shot. Um, and yeah, I think the wrap up here where Batman reveals that the toxins haven't affected him is sort of like his final the final nail in the coffin for him to realise that this is his destiny. Yeah, that's it. I went on a bit babbling there, so sorry. No, 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 no it's, it's all relevant, I would say. <laughs> okay, so uh, are you ready to play? I'm ready to play, so... Three, two, two one, one, play! I love the red light on the face here. I thought you were just very red in the face there. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I thought you were. So that's all of his fear toxin wasted. <laughs> and then he goes for it again. If it was empty. Well, no, like, um, I think he's talking about, because he stabs him there, but I think in the, earlier in the film he's talking about a certain dosage that, oh, that yeah. people can have. Everyone, uh, when I was editing, was talking about how comical a shot of Scarecrow slowly falling down in the background was. It kind of looks like the way, I don't know if you've ever played Doom. You know the pink oh, monsters yeah. that you shoot and they go, <laughs> the way they lie down after they've been shot. <laughs> kind of reminds me of the outline of that. <laughs> I can't remember what they're called, man. So this is like just a wrap-up bit here. And um, we sort of have the GCPD officer here, which is also played by Jack. Uh, As revealed in the bloopers. <laughs> yes. Sort of putting into evidence Scarecrow costume. Oh, the pinky. And then I, I, I'll do my favorite, well, one of my favorite shots is... Um, Why am I outside a church? Um, well, originally it was meant to be like a chapel uh, on Arkham Island. Uh, like, a, sort of like a chapel of rest sort of thing. I thought it might be a tribute towards me or something like that. You know, just <laughs> like the religious imagery. <laughs> oh, God, Carl. Love this. It might have been. Love that. Um, and then that was basically a homage in the um, ending of Batman 89. I know. It's nice, yeah. isn't it? So, um, yeah, I mean, should we just talk briefly in a second about the post credit scene? Yeah, so yes. mid, mid mid credit scene. Sorry. Oh yeah, it's actually mid credit. There is no post credit scene. But I do, I do love this scene that we shot. So the basic idea of this is that the Joker has escaped, obviously <laughs> after his last scene with Batman, um, and that Crane and Elliot have basically just tossed Harley's body out there. Uh, I, I love the music cues here. Oh, I, I absolutely. I love that ending. <laughs> just say that we didn't steal this egg from the uh, from the Joker film. 
we actually presented this before the film even came out. Yeah, that's that is so, true. That is true. Um, and we took the beat of the films to it. That scene <laughs> was edited um, early last year. Well, there you go. So, so before I think Joker team, even came out. <laughs> yeah, I think all we'd seen was a teaser of the Joker. Um, but we weren't meant to be stepping on anyone's toes there or anything like that. No. Um, definitely not. But I do love the post, uh, the, that credit scene there. Um, so, yes, that is Batman Tower of Arkham, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I liked it. I thought it was all right. I, I, look, I, I enjoy, what I enjoyed most was the fact that I got to work on this for so long with so many talented people. I mean, look at the cast list here. It's such a long cast list. 40 cast members. If, and you got to remember, guys, no one got paid for this film. No, no one. Um, people got paid for writing, which is um, something else, but uh, there's a large cast and crew here of people who worked for free and, you know, really... Just two cast members shy of having 40, but then obviously two cast members weren't in, it in the end, but, you know, that's it's still amazing the amount we had, though. Yeah, definitely. And, guys, all I'm going to say is when you see some of the amount, the, the amount of people we've got for Relic of the Jedi... I mean, we've got one shoot where we've got about 30 to 40 people on set, so it's going to be absolutely... We've got three directors for that shoot, so it's going to be absolutely insane. Um, I'm one of them! Carl is one of them, yes he is. He's going to be, he's going to be assistant director on a lot of the days uh, we're shooting. Uh, again, at the end here, uh, special thanks to Nikki Samuels and the rest of Sambro International and Manchester Central Buildings for letting us use the facilities throughout the production. Also, I will say, I, I fucked this up right at the end. Finally, thank you to Bill Kane and Bob Finger. Got their names wrong. It was Bob Kane and Bill Finger. Uh, and I only noticed that when I was watching the live... I just noticed that. I, was only, I only noticed it when I was watching the live premiere on YouTube. I was like, oh, no. Uh, and then it's it it right now. Um, so, yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is Batman Terror of Arkham. Um, I hope you realise now, after this video, the length that we went to to produce this film. Obviously, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea at the end of the day, and that's fair enough. But at the end of, uh, at the end of what we uh, established here, um, we had a journey that lasted from January 2017 all the way to um, August... 2019 to yeah. two and a half years. Yeah. And if you can't appreciate the quality of the film throughout a two, two and a half year period where, you know, mentioned it before, we've had majority of the cast members leave. We've had to change the scripts three or four times. Um, I had all my equipment stolen. So we went through a hell of a lot to get to this point. And no matter what people say, uh, I'm proud. I'm proud of the cast. I'm proud of... Uh, the whole team, the whole crew behind it, and like, look what it's leading towards now. I mean, we've got uh, our new re website that's up and running. With um, you know, I, I met Carl through this, and now he's a full member of Infinite Potential Films, um, who's you know producing films. You'll see on the website he's down as a creative director because the ideas that this person has is absolutely um, astonishing. And I can't wait for people to see the next line of projects that we've got in store. Not just fan-based, but original content too. We've got series yep. in the works. We've got original films in the works. Not just through you know sci-fi and action. We've got uh, Carl's got a, a comedy series that he's currently writing, which we spoke about briefly on Tuesday, and sounds absolutely amazing. Um, we've got a horror it's film because it's it's laughing at my misery. <laughs> it was still funny. It's funny. Um, we've got a horror fan film that we're working on. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a noise. Where is it? Where is it? Because there's not gonna be no video of us here. So all I'm gonna do is make a noise, and people can guess what fan film we're doing. Carl knows. Yeah. yeah um, so that's one project we've got working on. Uh, obviously, we've got. Relic of the Jedi, which is our next project, which we're 
we've completed pre-production for we just obviously with what's going on in the world at the minute we're currently waiting for everything to blow over until we produce uh the film physically and um we've got some sci-fi films we're working on carl have i missed anything out there um i sort of think so currently we've got three separate sci-fi projects including relic of the jedi yes did i say that right on me dig up tongue tie <laughs> Um, we have one horror project, which you've just teased. Yes. Um, oh, and we have, relation to this, what we've just been reviewing, there's two other projects. Yes, there is. Uh, there is. Do and you want to talk about them a little bit? or? Uh, well, one of them is going to central, uh, be a centralised story around two of the characters in this film. Not Batman or James Gordon, so I'll let you guys. They'll be, they'll be in it. But they'll be in they're... it, but not as key main characters, more as side characters. So um, I'll let you guys try and figure that one out, and then that one's going to be. I think we discussed this last week. Oh, that one's going to be sort of designed as a series. Um, and I think it's think not... Gotham. That's yes, all think, I'm think Gotham, um, <laughs> but in our universe. Yes, and then the other one is. One that I might as well just not not reveal reveal, but I might as well just say it'll be the fir- third and final film in the uh, in our Batman universe. The Shatterverse. The Shatterverse. And, That's what you call it. <laughs> yeah, and let's face it: in the video games, what came after Batman: Arkham Asylum? That's all I'm gonna say. We have got so many incredible ideas um down and we can't wait to share them with you guys but mm-hmm. um have, have we missed any other projects out there carl um there was uh I don't know. there was obviously a, a few of the films that we've talked about in the past but i don't know if they're coming to fruition or um one of them was like a was it a psychological drama it began with a uh, Oh. oh, yes, that one is, uh, we, yes, we had a psychological drama that was, um, that I'd wrote a premise to, and it was, it was, it was really fun to write, to be honest, but the only issue was, I, at the time when I wrote it, I don't think I had the sort of mental capacity to try and figure out an in-depth plot analysis of the film, so it's something that I definitely want to go back to, but we've got so many projects lined up, it's absolutely insane, and it's one thing, you know, by the end of the year, I think me and Carl have both spoke about this, we want to have Relic of the Jedi definitely released publicly, um, it's going to be a festival runner for us, definitely, and um, I want us to have passed a thousand subscribers on YouTube, because I think that is definitely in the realms of possibility, Um and I want us to be starting to update the YouTube page with more original day-to-day stuff, you know, like kind of like vlogs, but more like behind-the-scenes stuff of what we're doing. So we just want to fill the Infinite Potential brand out a bit more and expand on what we're already doing, really, I think. I don't know how you feel about that, Carl. Definitely. With you all the way. Amazing. So do you have any closing remarks for the Batman Terror Bark and commentary? Um... All I'm going to say really is, uh, well, first and foremost, um, I hope you've all enjoyed. I hope you, if you've watched the film like without the commentary, which you probably should do, otherwise you'll just hear us speaking through the whole thing <laughs> and pulsing. Um, if you want to watch it for yourself, yeah, get get back on there. Let's get them ratings up. Let's subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, regarding um, our future product, uh, projects um what i will say is this we seem to be getting better and better every time you know so obviously if, if you compare terror of arkham with the first film you will see how much it has improved you know there's a lot of things you've got to take into account not every not no film's perfect you know but obviously we want to try and strive to get as close to that as possible so with our next project relic of the jedi star wars story we are hoping for it to be 10 times bigger and better than what this has been. And this, for us, I think has been great, but we want to get it, we want to do it better every single time. As for a future Batman project, you probably guessed what it is already for you gamer fans. Um, uh, We've got something very, very, very special planned with that one. So 
we hope you stick around for that. You know, it might come sooner than you think. Who knows? Um, yeah, I think that's about all, really. Well, I hope you all enjoyed it, like Carl said, and I hope you're all subscribing to the channel, liking our content, and supporting us on both Facebook and Instagram to uh, stay in tune with what we're going to be doing next. Uh, if you guys have any queries about us producing something for you, uh, then please get in contact with us via our website, infinitepotentialfilms.com. Uh, we don't just make films. We've got um, a lot of um, sort of corporate things that are coming up in the background, and we've done uh, a corporate video for uh, Samro International as well as uh, Sizzle videos for Samro International. Um, so, yeah, if you guys want to get in contact with, about, uh, with us about a project that you want to pursue, then uh, please do, because at the end of the day, you know, if... If I wouldn't have Carl here right now, I wouldn't be able to do half the things that I've been doing. So adding to your arsenal with more people is just going to make everything 10 times easier and 10 times better for everyone involved. So uh, collaborating is the key, guys. Um, keep moving forward, and we will see you all next time. Yes, see you all next time.